Hello and welcome to Africa 54. I'm Chamberlain who saw a channel television here in Lagos. I'm joined by Vincent McCurry at Voice of America in Washington. Well, thanks a lot, Chamberlain. I'm Vincent McCurry at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at incorporating rights protection into humanitarian response. Chamberlain also in Lagos brings you that story. Oh yes, yeah. the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights is encouraging more focus on the protection of the rights of internally displaced persons as part of the humanitarian response in the country. At an interagency meeting in Makurdi, the Benwise capital, the senior rights advisor from the OHCHR, Mr. Martin Ejidike, highlighted avenues for addressing violations of human rights in order to ensure justice. Channel Television's correspondent, Pius Anglo, compiled the report. There are still thousands of internally displaced persons living in camps in Benue State. After being rendered homeless by the farmers' herders' conflict, which escalated in January 2018. They are surviving on humanitarian intervention with basic needs such as food, water, medicine and clothing being provided for them. But for many, beyond the humanitarian assistance, the protection of their rights requires equal attention. And that's the essence of this interagency session in Makori, the Benue State capital, organized by the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in collaboration with the National Human Rights Commission in Nigeria. Security personnel, officials of the Ministry of Justice, media, among others, are in attendance. comes at a time when the Benue State government believes urgent redress is needed for the violations of the rights of internally displaced persons. The rights of uh, displaced people have been violated and uh, for quite a long time now nothing seems to be happening. All the promises that were made uh, either by the federal government or other agencies in terms of coming to rehabilitate by maybe providing shelter and all that, we've not seen anything. So I feel that uh, people have been neglected for so long and there's need for something to be done in budget. The OHCHR Senior Rights Advisor confirms that human rights abuse will not be overlooked. We are, we are holding this report, we are holding this workshop in Benue State as part of the UN intervention in the Middle East, in the, in the Middle Belt, which goes beyond Benue. Benue State. And it's focused on the impact and consequences of clashes between Hamas and Hedas, which has led to a lot of displacement and created a humanitarian situation. So what we are doing in organizing this workshop is to make sure that human rights, respect for human rights, is integrated in the, in the humanitarian, in humanitarian response and is part of the humanitarian response. The meeting also covers presentations from various experts that provide in-depth understanding of the causes and solutions to internal displacement. All right, now, so here now to talk about protecting the rights of victims of the former Herders conflict is the senior human rights advisor, that's Mr. Martin Ejidike. He joins us from our studios in Abuja. Mr. Martin, thank you for joining us today. Could you go ahead and tell us, look, what are the humanitarian rights abuses that occurred as a result of this farmer herder crisis that you think really urgently needs to be addressed? Um, thank you so much for, for having me. Um, the major uh, human rights uh, challenges that arise out of these clashes are clearly um, loss of lives, destruction of properties, and displacement. Particularly in relation to displacement, it's become a huge problem. Um, in 
late mid early last year actually when we undertook an assessment of the situation we found out that at least close to 200,000 people were displaced in Benue state alone and when you look at you know the statistics you know nationwide in terms of the impact and the level of you know displacement that has been created as a result of this, it's really um, very, very concerning. I think figures are going up as much as uh, 500,000 uh, nationwide in relation to this specific, uh, specific issue of clashes between headers and, and farmers. Could you uh, tell us the thinking behind the uh, OHCR coming up with this approach of incorporating the rights protection into human, human, uh, human rights and humanitarian response now? Actually, what is happening in Nigeria, it's actually a response from the United Nations, uh, United Nations in Nigeria. Of course, as you know, the UN operates as a family. The lead on this is actually the, the head of the UN in Nigeria, and with the support and collaboration of all the agencies, uh, all the UN agencies in Nigeria. So basically, what we are concerned about is the human rights violations that have been related to this, and what we're looking at, we're also looking at trying to encourage the, the government, the national authorities, which ultimately has, you know, the responsibility for protection and the responsibility to protect, you know, solution, to seek, you know, lasting solutions uh, to the problems created, you know, by these uh, by these clashes. Well, I know that lots of people are working towards getting a solution to this challenge, but how does the OHCHR handle the complaints or the human rights complaints that are sent to it? Okay, um, the, the human rights, the UN, the UN human rights mechanisms have, you know, different, um, you know, different ways of dealing with issues like this. You have the, you have the treaty bodies that deals with, you know, issues that come under specific treaties that countries have ratified, and Nigeria has ratified all the core human rights treaties. So the, the, the content of those treaties are applicable in Nigeria. Additionally, Nigeria is also as a member of the of the United Nations. Nigeria is also subject to the application of, um, of international mechanisms that grow from the charter that is linked to the, um, to the Human Rights Council. So where there are violations of human rights, the avenues to deal with it would be through Nigeria reporting to true reports of Nigeria to treaty bodies. There's so, also a review right. by the special mechanisms, what we call the special, uh, the special rapporteurs. These special rapporteurs cover country-specific mandates and thematic mandates and some of the thematic mandates link link to the issues to, to specific violations that relate to the clashes between between uh, between headers and farmers and in the last um, in, in, uh, in the last couple of years we've had a number of them um, visit Nigeria we've had the the special rapporteur on the right to health special rapporteur on trafficking sale of children comp contemporary forms of um, of slavery um, visit, visit Nigeria, and we're expecting that this year there would be uh, the special rapporteur on the right to housing, as, per, as well as summary, uh, as summary executions would visit Nigeria. And they would touch, they would touch on these issues, and usually they make recommendations for for government implementation. And and as I say, the ultimately the responsibility lies with the government of Nigeria to implement its its international obligations. What the UN does is to assist the government of Nigeria as much as possible in implementing its international obligations linked to this. All right, then, Mr. Thank Martin Ejidike, thank you very much indeed for joining us today on Africa 54.